QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021, Tax Line Mapping, Tax Balance Sheet Schedule L. Let's get into it with Intuit, QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our S Corp test file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. In prior presentations, we mapped out our information in the chart of accounts here in QuickBooks, exported then the information to our tax software as well as to Excel. Now we're doing a reconciliation to see what kind of adjustments we need to make after having exported into our tax software. Tax software looks like this. This is the first page of the 1120S. We're now concentrating in on the fourth page, or the, uh, yeah, the fourth page here, which is gonna be the Schedule L. So the Schedule L is basically the balance sheet on the Schedule S. And we want to just line this up and say, okay, is there anything we need to be picking up on the balance sheet? Now, we already looked at the building and the property planting equipment. That's going to be often one of the biggest problems on the balance sheet because these items need to be tying out to the depreciation schedule. So if you're overriding these, these items and you can do so when you import, then you want to tie them out to the depreciation schedule. Uh, all the other items look like they pulled over pretty good. And they shouldn't be a problem for us. So we can tick and tie them off basically to what's in our system on uh, the balance sheet. So we got the check-in, the receivables, the allowance, and so on and so forth. So the cash, the the accounts receivable, the 30000 looks good. We have the tax-exempt uh, securities. I think everything's correct. The 566122. If we line that up here for all the assets going down to here would be the the 555 but uh we're talking book basis it would be down to here which is 566 122 so that looks good and then we have the accounts payable the other current liabilities the mortgage and then the common stock pulled over and then what we don't have is the correct retained earnings so that's going to be our problem in in our system here because uh, the retained earnings should be basically the sum of all this now the retained earnings is, is of course often one of the more complex kind of components because the whole balance sheet is going to roll into the retained earnings so you could see here actually um, the retained earnings should be basically this the sum of this which would be the 373 122 and what happened here is on the retained earnings we only have the 85 714 because we don't have the beginning balance numbers which we would need if this was a continuing return. So that means that that's, this 85714 represents the book income. And now we just have to add to it, which is everything from the blue accounts down. We just had to add to it the retained earnings at the beginning of the period. Now also note that if I go back to my trial balance over here, how did, the, how did this thing get generated? This 85714, was it generated from us pulling that information directly from the tax line from the trial balance from QuickBooks. Let's take a look at the trial balance over here. So this is the information that represents us importing the data into the system from QuickBooks. If I go to the tax line mapping, take a look at retained earnings. Notice it's not mapped out right here. This retained earnings isn't mapped out. It would be at the 287,408 if we had uh, imported it from this point. But we didn't want to do that because what we want to do is for have that line item to be calculated within the system it's kind of a double check it's our double entry accounting system double checking itself so we would like the retained earnings to be calculated internally so it's kind of good i would think that it's not going to be overridden by this number so i'm not i'm not unhappy that it's not being mapped out in other words so let's go back to the tax return so we can see this number then where's it coming from it's coming from the amount on this page five the 85 714 the book income so the book income is is what's feeding into the balance sheet which is basically on a book basis not a tax basis if i go to the data input screens and we take a look at the balance sheet and we say let's take a look at the balance sheet down here there's nothing in uh, the retained earnings and if we were to put something in there it would be an override given the o here saying override so i don't want to put anything in the ending balance i do want to put something in the beginning balance which would be there anyways if if we had the prior year return and had entered the prior year return so the prior balance uh we're going to say then is this 287408 so 287408 is the prior balance 287408 because uh, 287408 
it's because that's the balance before we ruled out net income into it, meaning that's the balance before the current period activity. And then we rolled in net income, which is going to be this 85714. This uh, 287408 is what should be there from the prior year tax return, meaning it should be prior year's ending balance, which would be the current year's beginning balance. If it were not, we would have to do an adjusting entry to kind of to reconcile the prior balance, the rollover of the retained earnings. So if we just put the beginning balance in there and not the ending balance, then if I go back on over and check out the balance sheet on page four, see if that does it for us. Now we're in balance, the 566-122, uh, and there's the 373-122, which ties out to all of this. If I, if I add the income statement accounts in, we got the 373 122 or in other words it's the prior balance here plus the net income i'm holding down control plus that item there so prior balance plus the net income 373 122 and that's what ties in here so uh, that looks good now our balance sheet ties out so we've got our income statement tied out to the three locations and our balance sheet tied out so now we'll just continue with any other changes and any other changes we have we're going to lead with the uh with the amounts in excel make the adjustments here making sure we're in balance we see both sides of the adjustments and then we're going to enter that into the tax system so that we can basically be in balance every extra step that goes along the way we, we don't want to do anything extreme we don't want to do like multiple steps at one time that's going to throw the whole thing out of balance to the point where we don't know what happened <laughs> we want to do it one step at a time leading with excel at this point and then putting it into uh, the the Lacert system uh, to see if we can kind of match what's going on to keep our eye on uh, exactly what the changes are from a point in time where we understand where we are.